Hello and welcome to the World Cup Minute. My name's Josh. I'm here with Brandon. Brandon, how are you? It's great to be podcasting uh, from America, Josh, as yep. World Cup champions. How does it feel? <laughs> you know, it it feels like we won because my, I would say my goal was to make it to the round of 16. Now, of course, you can recalibrate those goals as things as things get better quarterfinals are bust now right yeah exactly but we've we've already won i think uh there were some betting odds that came out earlier today for this u.s netherlands match and you know basically they're giving the u.s like a 30 25 30 percent chance of winning which i think is fine good i mean if you would tell me going to this world cup that the u.s would would, would go into a quarterfinal match with a 30 percent chance of winning that match a pre, have, it's a round of 16 yeah. match i guess it's not technically a quarter right final. Yeah. sorry i mean i mean a round of 16 with the, with the 30 percent chance of making it to the quarterfinals yeah. i would i would have snapped your hand off right that's a great deal i'm very yeah. happy by that yeah i agree and i mean we can talk a little bit more about this dutch team and i, I guess we will as we head toward the Saturday matchup, but it yep. is, this is not a vintage Dutch side. They can yep. be got at. I think it's one of the better matchups that the U S could have hoped for. And you look at England getting, you know, having to face Senegal, Senegal, you know, they had a tough match against Ecuador. They had to kind of grit their teeth. I think they were definitely the better team there. Yep. <laughs> I, I would rather be playing the Netherlands than Senegal, honestly, this weekend. Yeah. I, it's like, it's a scary thing to say, right? Cause it's like, I don't want to speak a, a loss into existence, but, yeah. but, but I, 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 certainly the Netherlands are the more famous side, but I, I'm kind of with you there. I mean, you see Koulibaly knock that goal and you're like, man, this is SAR score the pen. It's like, this team is loaded. Like it's, it's not just with Premier League talent, but just with, with, it's a really talented squad. And the, the Netherlands are as well, but you know, they still have this issue with, um, with the health of um, of Depay, Depay yeah. and in general, the team is. I mean, certainly when you, when you look at someone like like De Jong, we just don't have anybody that good on our side. We have we have we, we don't have even have a Cody Gakpo, Josh. Well, Gakpo, De Jong, and Virgil Van Dyke are a spine. <laughs> it's just like. That, that is just superior. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they're a better team. It doesn't mean that those players are all going to perform. But so I, I think that there, there, are, there are reasons to be afraid going into Saturday. I'm certainly not going to go into it with the confidence that you are. You think we're going to steamroll them. Is that what you're saying? Like 5-0, 6-0, something like that? Why not? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we're World Cup champions. You know, <laughs> uh, I, feel like, I feel like they have to, they have to come into our house. Because uh, mm -hmm. we we basically, I think the the uh, mayor of Qatar gave us the key to the city, yeah, the country, whatever it is over there. Uh, after the match, you yep. know, the people, the you know, the women and children were crying in the streets, tears of joy, saying "Liberate us!" And um, I mean, it's just an incredible time to hold an American passport. <laughs> I don't even I don't even really know what kind of bit you're doing right now, but it was it was a great it was it was a great win today. It was a, a an extreme nail biter. I watched it. You and I both. Uh, it's very tricky with these games being on at two p.m. in the afternoon. So I took a half day today. I watched it in Midtown uh, Manhattan with uh, with a producer, a, a Patreon producer, uh, and and longtime uh, one of our close friends, Trevor. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a we had a great experience. And uh, just it, it wasn't even necessarily a big crowd, but we had the we had a TV and we had sound on, and we were drinking beers, and it was. That was great. And somebody accidentally poured an extra Guinness and the waitress came over and said, yeah, order one of these before. Do you want a free one? I said, yes. And that's when I knew things were, were you know, going to turn out okay it's for us. So it was a good omen. So it was, it was a good, it was a good match. My burger was good. I could go on about my experience, but it was, it, it was a pr pretty normal experience. Now you had to slip this match in whilst working today. So tell me about that experience. What was the, what was the watching the U S play, um, this match, you know, was sort of surreptitiously today. Well, I was also in Midtown, but I was in a conference room with 20 people and mm -hmm. uh, who were all sort of engaged in a sort of conference room, circular sort of uh, yeah. hour and a half long discussion. Yeah. My boss is also a sports yeah. fan. Yeah. He did we all know turn... the classic you, right? Was it the classic you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Very, very much like a, um, like we were um, 
in some sort of like defense ministry sort of there's a bank of tv screens behind us now as pretty pretty standard conference room setup yeah but my my boss is a sports fan too and earlier in the day he just kind of apologized he's like you know i didn't really think and scheduled this meeting that basically uh started uh, i watched the first 20 minutes i was like watching the game on my phone as i was walking to the conference room and from there it was all um it was just ticker city I if mm-hmm. I were to bring up, so you you didn't even video. try you didn't even try to watch this gift as this thing um, afterwards. Like you just knew that you would be spoiled, or there was just no way to watch this cleanly after sporting events in general. You just really, unless if you're 15 minutes behind, sure, then then you can kind of catch up through injuries and things like that. But if you're full 90 minutes behind for a big match, it's almost impossible to totally yeah not find out what happened, right? I know there's something about. I mean, you could, you could. Uh, there are many different situations as a as a big sports fan where, you know, we've we've you know gone on social media blackouts and and watched Man City Liverpool later in the evening because man, that match is just going to be incredible. There's something about the World Cup though, or I feel like it it kind of can only be consumed live. Like yeah. it's like. Do I want to watch? It's like eating reheated macaroni and cheese. I'm like, well, I cannot it's watch in real time. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. We, we can't watch every single minute. Now, of course, when it's your country playing, you know, s- some countries would actually declare national holidays. And I've got a couple of calls into Joe Biden's office right mm-hmm. now, asking him what went yeah. wrong. You know, what well, wires got crossed? <laughs> why were we all at work today? So uh, you so- saw that. So the Pulisic goal comes through. Did you did you see it in real time on the ticker uh, yeah. on your phone? Yeah. So I'm 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 refreshing the ticker on my phone. So and I get I'm getting push notifications as well. So I see goal and mm-hmm. relieved immediately mm-hmm. to see it was for the U.S. Moments yep. later, it's revealed as a Pulisic goal, and I'm feeling happy. Like I wish I was watching it, but I'm feeling, of course, I'm feeling happy that our guy, our boy, Pulisic yep. does score. Um, and from there, I'm like t- just like tensely um, refreshing and following mm-hmm. like this sort of like text text based play so by play. It becomes a different becomes a different kind of drama, right? There's yeah. the initial drama like we need to score, we need to because you know the only way the U.S. was getting through is we won this match, right? So it's yeah. we need to score, we need to score, we need to score. We score one goal, we get a second goal, which which is just barely chalked off or offside. Very very close goal. Uh, it would you know would have been um, a way, way I would have had a second brilliant goal of the tournament. Yeah. Um, just you know so just offside, uh, and then we go into halftime, and suddenly you you kind of knew at least I knew we were not scoring a second goal. There was that was not going to be on the. First, I mean Pulisic doesn't come out for the second half, so that's already a bad sign. Uh, and then you're like, okay, so we are. Uh, we're going to hold on for dear life for the next 45 minutes plus 76 minutes of extra time. That is now the reality. We got nine minutes. I don't know where the nine minutes came. There was not that much time wasting. Like I don't, it was crazy. The so, Buffalo um, Wild Wings button is, is present in this world cup for sure. Yeah. I'm basically fine with it. I actually hate the way that extra time isn't properly accounted for uh, in premier league matches. I, you know, you can have like a nine minute VAR review and then there's three minutes of extra time for the half. And you're like, well, I just didn't want, like there was no football for nine minutes. So like, can you give me some of that time back yeah. right now? It's injuries are one thing, but I think especially with all the technology, technological stuff slowing down the game. Now, I think I like the idea of adding uh, the extra minute. So, so they come out and then it's just, and we'll talk about the other games today too, but you know, they, so they come out and it was, uh, a just hearts the first i'd say the first 30 minutes of that second half from like the 45th minute 75th minute we were still basically in control uh iran didn't really do that much and you know 20 minutes to go right around the time honestly that we brought on uh shack Moore. like i gotta say i am inclined to like somebody named shack Moore. like that is a name that i think is cool and i want to root for him i want to have a shack Moore shirt mm-hmm. shack Moore has not earned that t-shirt yet that that purchase branded Shaq less they, you know Shaq less exactly he uh so they, they come on they bring on walker zimmerman who was actually fine too but i was delighted that they brought in carter vickers to, to play a center back over over um mm-hmm. over zimmerman because I, I thought he'd been pretty poor in the first two matches obviously conceded the goal to, to gareth bale 
Mm-hmm. So in the end, even that, that draw doesn't really matter because of goal difference, we would have been second place anyway. So yeah. there's really, you know, it's, it's all, that's all fine. But so they, so they, they make some changes. We sort of start to play more defensively. And I, I suppose you can't argue with the results because we did win one nil, but man, it got hairy at the end. And you sort of, it was like, this happens a lot, and I suppose you can't really argue with it because you're not going to get caught on the break when you play more defensively. But we were completely in control, and then you shift into don't lose mode, and that is when you suddenly look like you're absolutely going to lose because Iran was just peppering the goal for the final. Mm-hmm. Not, not even like peppering the goal. In this, I don't actually think um, Turner had to make a single save in this match, but they were basically they were doing what Wales did a little bit of, which was get in the box and then feign a foul, and it was terrifying because. As you just don't know, right? I mean, we saw with the with the handball yesterday and Bruno with with some of the foul calls. Like when you slow everything down to the millisecond with VAR, everything can look like a painful foul or a handball or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so that was that was, the fear wasn't actually so much that Iran was going to do something; it was that technology was going to combine with Iran to to give them a, a penalty. Um, and it got really scary right at the end there. And even the last mi- like seconds of that game. When they blew the whistle, he kind of blows the whistle right in the box because there was like a little bit of a foul there. And I was like, did he just call a pen in the like in the 10th minute of nine yeah. minutes of extra time? This that is what I, this, this is what I caught uh, in real time okay. on on my okay. Twitter feed as I, as like the meeting is wrapping up and everyone's yeah. high fiving. And I'm just like, don't talk to me. Like, I, what's going <laughs> on here? Everyone yeah. on my timeline was freaking out. Pen, yeah. no, not like this. And um, so, did you, yeah, did you get a screen up at all or were you just, you just you I, stuck that, with what was working? Uh, yeah. I mean, it was, it was like the final seconds anyway. It was, yeah. um, uh, yeah, I wasn't going to blow my, blow my entire cover at that, you know, at that yeah. very moment. Yep. Um, so yeah, that was Harry. I mean, I don't, you, you see this a lot. I mean, you saw Spain uh, kind of buckled against Germany and let Germany right. uh, run at them for an entire second half. I, yeah. I don't think that this is always like a conscious tactical decision where these teams in yeah. control let their foot off the gas. I do think that nerves play into sure. it. You know, sure. the, the other team, it, Berhalter doesn't make a defensive uh, substitution. I mean, you can say Kellen Acosta might be, but that was a forced substitution because of McKinney's injury. He doesn't make right. a defensive substitution until the 82nd minute. Um, and then so, it's what? It's, um, he takes Zimmerman a, he's comes way- on. For way, I think, right? I think it's it's a real offense for defense, which which is which is fine. I mean, there's you know, it's not like a, an insane, or maybe it was. Um, Zimmerman actually, comes what? on for Dest in the 82nd minute, which is like take one of the the you know the fullbacks off and yeah. become a little bit more narrow and compact, and then Shaq Moore comes on from Tim Way. If our if our friend James was on the pod okay. right now, he would defend Shaq Moore as uh, like the U.S.'s best one on one defender. But you know, this is okay. not. I, it's not like a Gus Macker tournament, okay? Yeah, I have not seen the good Shaq Moore, so I'll, I'll believe it when I actually see it on the pitch. But anyway, we won. It was awesome. If I am not jumping uh, with excitement, it's because uh, I was. this all happened five hours ago, and I was drinking a lot at the time, and I have now sobered up a little bit. But I am very, mm-hmm. I'm very excited uh, for the result. I'm excited for it. So 10 a.m. on Saturday, I will be at a conference, much like you today. Just we're, we're, we're cursed with, with real life get in the way of these this is you know usually the one of the reasons that you and i both you know have gotten so obsessed the premier league is because it's on at 10 a.m on saturdays that's typically a great time even with families you can kind of get away with watching quite a lot of matches but um it's just the timing didn't work out so i now have to figure out whether i feign a stomach bug whether Mm -hmm. i just i I think what i do this is my you know to be realistic here i think what i do is track the first half on my phone right And then I take an 11 a.m. lunch and I'm gone for as long as it takes, including extra time. And that's yeah, just, you, I'm not alone could, at the booth, so it'll put, be okay. Put it this way. You say, I'm going to take an early lunch so that your colleague can be free for a proper lunch. Let's so you can kind of <laughs> yeah. be a hero yeah, in this to situation. Do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, much like you at your job, the secret's out with me. You know, I did change into this into this USA hoodie before I left my office today for my for my half day. So a, a great win. And then England has a has a really nice win as well. And I you know, it may be that they just have a real I mean, they were great in the first half. They were excellent in the second, though. It may be that they just have a um, a thing about playing the U.S. You know, it's, it's, it's a, a, a two, almost 250 years of drama, Brandon. And it just it all comes up and they just don't want to lose 
to the United States. I don't, I mean, because their performance against us, I'll give us some credit, certainly, but they did not play well in that match. Yeah. That was not a, a great England performance by, in any way. I mean, it was, you know, and I, they, I don't think Rashford, did Rashford even play a minute in that match? I that England he, match? Mm, I'll, I'll, I I'll, say I'll he look came while on you, as a substitution. Yeah, yeah. I can I'll look, look it up you if you want to vamp. For a second. Oh, no, you vamp. You're going to look. Yeah, you vamp. Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll vamp. Yeah, uh, England. Yeah, it is it is a roller coaster. <laughs> Boy, howdy, England. Boy, howdy. Um, I mean, you could flip it on Wales and, like, this is an embarrassing tournament for Wales, unfortunately. And, I, and I, <laughs> I'm and i sure we have um, Welsh fans who are listening right now, and I don't mean to, to stick the knife in, but um, that's a poor <laughs> show, guys. And after all the uh, viral clips of Michael Sheen that we had to endure and, you know, this is the best that the you know they can do. Yeah. I mean, B- Gareth Bale uh, reportedly did his hamstring uh, in the first half, and yeah, I saw that. that's 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 a big miss, obviously for Wales. But mm-hmm. England, I think, to shake off the you know when England have a poor performance like they did against the U.S., yep. you know the English media, you know, I mean, sorry, we had to read like two stories about how Burhalter um has a bad relationship with Giorania. If you think that's bad, yeah. like go to England. Like there's like yeah. it, it's an weird... avalanche of horrible yeah. stories about this team when they have a poor result. They shake it yeah. off and they come back and, and they smash wells. Yeah. There's there's a weird thing and I was thinking about this with, with Burhalter and I think it's true of Marcus Rashford as well. He did by the way come on in the US match but in the seventy eighth minute, which isn't really long enough to, to make any kind of significant impact in the match. I, mean, I guess this is not for Rashford for me. Time, but... I could do it, but so. yeah, but I think I actually think that was like the only match that had less than, I think it was only like four minutes of extra time in that match. It was like the, the fewest of, of any of these world cup matches so far. But I was thinking there's this thing that people tend to do when somebody is like, I think that bear Halter has not done an especially great job leading up to the world cup, but then he's been good in the world cup. And there's this weird thing where it's like this retroactive, like, see, he was always good. He was, you know, and I think this is like with Marcus Rashford right now, there's a lot of this, like, see, Marcus Rashford has always been awesome. It's like, well, actually, no, if you watch the last, you know, two, two and a half years of, of Manchester United, he has not, he has not been good. And so it's, it, it, he's talented and he's been better this season a little bit. He's starting, starting to, to be a little better. Uh, but it's it's like he is good again. I, like he, the talent is there, and and you know, it's, I mean, just this this team is just so loaded. This England squad. It's really. Um, I still think that they have a excellent chance of winning the World Cup just because they they have so much talent across the board. And um, you know, keep a. It's you know, what is this now? Two consecutive clean sheets for them. So I don't know. I were I was worried that Maguire and Shaw would would be a real problem. It has not been the case so far. Shaw, you know, even supplied one of the. Um, assist for one of the opening goals. I think it was the opening goal in the Iran match. So they've been they've been fine. They look really good. They play Senegal on Sunday. That's at 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern time on Sunday. Uh, so that'll be like what 7 p.m. in England. That's right during the Sunday roast, Brandon. I don't know what I don't know what they're going to do for that. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be hairy. I think that is a really scary match for England. But they kind of all are once you get to the round of 16, right? Mm-hmm. It's going to be there's, I, there's not going to be very many matches where people are like, oh yeah, that's a that's a walk. Right, I, I, mean, I can't even imagine what that what that scenario would be. Maybe, maybe if Australia wins uh, tomorrow, that might be that might be one. I don't know why I keep this continue with this Australia slander, but let's let's. So England will certainly be talking a lot more about them. Let's talk a little bit about the other uh, the Group A matches today too. We have uh, Netherlands with a sort of workman like easy two nil win over Qatar, and then the really exciting match today was Ecuador Senegal. Senegal uh, scores. The Senegal had so many chances in the match. They had like five chances in the first like eight minutes of this match. It was insane. Uh, finally, get a pen that uh, Sar scores in like whatever this forty fourth minute or something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then Ecuador equalize and you're, and that, that's it. Ecuador if they if they just hold on to that. They're through. Uh, but then Senegal come back with Kolobali and score another goal. Kind of a cool goal too. He sort of mm-hmm. like it. Kind of takes on like a little bit of like a half volley. It's a it's a, it's a nice. Nice strike from him and uh, a great celebration, too. And so but Senegal, Senegal come through. I'm kind of excited for them. I don't know why. It's sort of um, it's just nice to see. Um, do you kind of root for the African clubs, too? I don't know. It's just there's something about um, I think it's because the fans are so good in the stands. I think that's yeah. part of it. Right. They're just they, they seem like they really are enjoying themselves and kind of it's addictive to me. Yeah, it is infectious. I have infectious, always, yeah. I've always uh, rooted for Nigeria when they've been in the World Cup. So um 
I'm missing them. But no, I I think I think it's just ex- yes, it's exciting to see Senegal do well, and I think it's great for Senegal to come to the World Cup as champions of Africa and to show, you know, we're not just uh, champions of Africa. We are here to compete on the the global yeah. stage, and I think that is really significant for the for for the future of uh, football yeah. on that continent. And uh, you know, yeah. I, hope, I I hope they're not the only African country to uh, go to the knockout stages. Yeah, I think that um, uh, certainly Morocco, I think has has an excellent chance uh, when they play. Uh, later this week as well. So uh, that sets up uh, Senegal. And uh, as we said before, Senegal plays England. Uh, we'll talk more about that uh, before Sunday. But I think that's that's a really both both these matches are really fun. And and um, the Netherlands, I mean, just it's just great. I'm just so I'm so excited. I mean, U.S. is playing Netherlands in an elimination match of the World Cup. Like that is just that is just cool. Like, I don't care if it's yeah. not Aryan Robin Netherlands like that is awesome. That is just a really awesome place for us to be. Um, as a football slash soccer country, it's a it's a great step forward for us, and uh, and the fact that we did it with relative ease. I mean, you know, we yeah. were in, we were really in control of of all three matches in the World Cup. We, yeah. I, I would argue that we played better than all the, all the three teams that we faced, uh, England included. I agree, I agree, and it's it's you know it might sound like we're a bunch of homers, but I think it's yeah. you know it's a, you could. <laughs> Uh, get we out do, the past, but it's fine. Get you out know, the past we, stats. I, 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 I genuinely it. agree with you and, and genuinely think that. And to, to still not have lost a match and for this squad to be as young as it is, average age was 24 in the yep. starting lineup today, even bringing a new center back pairing, uh, whatever. We, we've already talked about this match. Couldn't be prouder of our boys, Josh. A great, ex- fantastic win. Pulisic too, really sticking his body in there and, and taking. Yeah, the speaking head, of our, our so boys, great. yeah, the 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 boys, um, Christians boys uh, are definitely definitely yeah. do a rest tonight. Whew, yeah, I, wherever. Yeah, they said abdomen, but I don't know. I think it meant okay. lower. Has lower the word abdomen. ruptured been used yet? <laughs> I don't know. Apparently, he's going to be okay for Good. Saturday. At least, he, but he did. You never want to see your 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 game winning talisman post from the hospital bed. That's always uh, rather be, they be in the the yeah, shirtless. Yeah, doing like the yeah, Mike Utley. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. You want to see what you want is the shirtless locker room photo, right? That's mm-hmm. the like the group photo. So anyway, uh, that we go move on to uh, tomorrow's matches. We have the Group C and D matches in the morning. We have Australia, Denmark, and Tunisia, France. Uh, I'll give you a quick uh, idea of the. Uh... Oh, interesting! They've actually they they flipped this around. Interesting, Brandon. So in the morning, you actually have the Group D matches. I don't know why they they did that, but um, so Group D. Uh, so France is already maybe I don't know. Maybe it's because of the. Uh... Who knows? I have no idea. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a TV scheduler. But uh, Australia, Denmark, Tunisia, France play. So uh, France is already through to the round of 16. So I think we'll see um, a kind of secondary squad for France, although the, the team is so loaded that it really doesn't kind of make that much of a difference. Um, Australia, it's, it's actually very simple. Um, Australia qualifies um, – uh, for the they qualify for the round of sixteen with a win versus Denmark, uh, and Denmark qualifies with a win versus Australia. There are some other scenarios that could happen, um, like if they Australia could also get through if they drew and Tunisia drew or lost. But I, I just feel pretty confident that, that France is going to go ahead and, and take Tunisia in this match, mm-hmm. and uh, and then so it basically sets up a straight. Danish Dynamite versus the, what are the Australia the the, uh, the Socceroos Socceroos that, uh, yeah yeah the mm-hmm. Socceroos so Danish Dynamite versus Socceroos that's a really uh, fun match I'm really excited about uh, half watching that uh, tomorrow morning during meetings Brandon it's going to be great um, and then uh, the, the 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 groups that I'm really excited I mean I am excited about the the that Denmark Australia game I think is going to be really fun the stakes are super high and both teams effectively need to win and that's mm-hmm. really what you want to see in an elimination game is is two squads playing each other where they both I actually thought that Iran would play more defensively today not to not to go double back for a second here but I really uh, I was surprised that match was as open as it was uh, considering how much a point was almost certainly going to get Iran through but M- much like in geopolitics always the aggressor Iran yeah yeah I well I it was the, the they were I don't really I actually I don't really under, quite understand their strategy but anyway that's that's I'm that's enough on on on, on that well we got to move on here so uh group C plays in the afternoon and this is I think the really the really exciting portion of tomorrow's matches we have Poland Argentina Saudi Arabia Mexico all four of these clubs can get through 
Uh, Poland is actually currently top of the group uh, because of gold, gold difference. Uh, and they're actually, they're, well, no, because of points. Honestly, I was going to say, honestly, they're, 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 through, they're on top because of points uh, with four. And then Argentina and Saudi Arabia both have three. So Poland um, can, can win the group and qualify for the round of 16 with a victory over Argentina. Um, they can also qualify uh, with a draw. So uh, basically a win or a draw gets them through. Um, Argentina qualifies with a win over Poland. Uh, they can also qualify with a draw and a Saudi Arabia draw or loss by fewer than three goals to Mexico. Um, and Saudi Arabia can qualify with a win over Mexico. And Mexico can qualify with a win and a Poland victory over Argentina. But they can also qualify by winning and making up the goal difference advantage in Poland and Argentina while Argentina draws or defeats Poland. So basically, what... If you're if you're supporting Mexico tomorrow, which I, I I feel like I'm I'm sticking with my North American squads, and I'll be I'll be pulling for Mexico tomorrow. So what we want is for Mexico to defeat Saudi Arabia by like two or three goals, and Argentina to defeat Poland by two or three goals. If that happens, that will be enough for Mexico to make up that goal difference and and qualify above Poland in their group. Now. This yeah. is just my personal rooting interest here, but there's basically there's just a lot of different scenarios where any any combination of these four clubs can can or countries can get through tomorrow. If you're Argentina and this was offered to you, basically cash out, um, you don't have to even play Poland, and you go straight to the third place match at the end of the tournament. Would you take it? <laughs> the third, I don't know. I mean, with Messi. They've already made a final with him, right? So yeah. I think they've got to push. They've got to. They've got to try to push one further. I. I don't know. I mean, the thing is, like, Poland is not going to be an easy team to beat tomorrow. I mean, this Chesney game is going to be insane. Poland, be, Argentina, yeah. and it's yeah. like, yeah, as as you just outlined the stakes. This this group is this group C is like all out awesome. warfare it's, at the moment. It's, awesome. it's going to be incredible. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm I'm really excited about all these matches. I mean, I think the, the the question with Mexico is, can they score two goals in a match? I mean, it's sort of the same the same thing with the U.S. Except the U.S. had a little more um, wiggle room. They didn't need to, to to make up any kind of goal difference. They had enough. You know, they they got the two draws. So for Mexico, they they need they almost certainly need to score a couple of goals. And then if they, I mean, if they were able to win like three nil over over. Um, uh, Saudi Arabia, then then Poland would just need to lose like one nil to uh, uh, to Argentina, and that would be, I think, enough for Mexico to go through. I, I don't, you know, I don't have like all the permutations. They'll, they'll start running these through for us once these games start, right? They'll start to pop up all the different scenarios in the screen as mm-hmm. they happen. But basically, all four teams will be trying to win tomorrow, and that is not usually the case when it comes to these these group stage matches, the round three. There's usually one team, kind of like France tomorrow, where they're just kind of Given everybody, Ben Pavard needs some minutes, right? Everyone's gonna get everyone's gonna get a chance to to get out there and 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 run around the pitch. It's like it's like it's like letting your kids run on the field. You know, everyone's gonna get a chance to to run around and play a little bit. Yeah, the piggyback rides uh, in the 60th minute are gonna be yeah uh, really fun to watch. You should yeah. see the team that they that like uh, the projected France team for tomorrow. It's like you know like Saliba. Oh, finally Saliba gets a chance. Saliba would start for. Probably what the, like the other thirty one countries in, in the World Cup. Oh uh, yeah, who would you take, uh, uh, Cameron Carter Vickers or William Saliba? I mean, yeah. God, yeah. I, I pray for William Saliba yeah. and my fantasy team. Yeah, like, I, Carter I, Vickers I, was good, was good though. He really was. I was I was impressed. Yep, I played well today. I mean, it's it's yeah the the center backs for the U.S. Tim Ream being reborn, Cameron Vickers, Cameron Carter Vickers has yeah, had we were, we were quite like, many again. opportunities to break into this team and hasn't been able yeah. to. Spurs fans will know him from uh, from their their squad way back when. Yeah. So yeah, it's good. To, it's just good to see these reclamation projects going on. Yeah. Well, speaking of, I think this pod, the, these daily pods, Brennan, I feel like we're having a mini reclamation project of our own. It turns out it's actually really hard to record a daily podcast when you have family in town and it's Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, the last two days, I, I felt much more like myself. I think we're back. Uh, we're back into uh, the yep. precise, always cheating slash World Cup minute order that we want. Let's keep the momentum going. Great win today. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.